right, Dennis, if you want to get started. Good afternoon. I'm Dennis Galecki. Welcome to the 498th Imagine Greater Buffalo program and our 120th virtual program hosted by our downtown cultural treasure, the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. We're so glad you've joined us today. This program is created by the Center for the Study of Art, Architecture, History and Nature, or Cezanne as I pronounce the acronym, and ImagineLifelongLearning.com. Before we get started, just a little housekeeping. Everyone watching will be muted and your video turned off. If you have a question or comment, please type it into the chat box and we'll go through them at the end of the presentation. We are recording this program, so you can watch it again later on the Downtown Central Library's Facebook page and YouTube channels. And we certainly hope you share the link with others. Now, on to our featured speaker. Dr. Bogdan Kotnis was born in Krakow, Poland. He lived approximately 30 years in Poland and 30 years in the United States, with two years as a legal resident of Denmark. He is a writer, educator, film director, and producer, journalist, business owner, Polonia activist, windsurfing coach, Reiki master, high school and college teacher in Poland and the United States, and a retired educational administrator in the Buffalo, New York public school system. Dr. Kotnis is the author of CAS, War, Love and Betrayal, a historical adventure novel about Kazimir Pulaski, a Polish American hero of the late 18th century. He holds a master's degree in American literature from the Jagiellonian University in Krakow, Poland, and a PhD degree in educational administration from the State University of New York at Buffalo in educational leadership and institutional development. He is the CEO of Polonia Global Fund and the owner of Polonia Perspective. Currently, Dr. Kotnis serves as institutional development strategist for corporate and not-for-profit clients. Dr. Kotnis has traveled the world extensively. He speaks Polish, English, Danish, Russian, Ukrainian, German, and some Spanish. His hobbies include windsurfing, sailing, skiing, tennis, scuba diving, climbing, and chess. Oh, he's also married and has two children and two wonderful, I'm sure, grandchildren. I do this program because there are so many interesting people in our backyard here in Greater Buffalo, and certainly uh, our speaker today is one of them. Uh, how about Bogdan? Take it away, please. Uh, thank you, Dennis, and, and welcome to everyone. Thank you for finding the time and interest in... Uh, listening to me and I wanted to really thank Dennis because we met uh, uh, Dennis reads a lot and but he also scouts the neighborhood so he found me and 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 he brought me in here and uh, I wanted to talk about my book and it is uh, Kaz War Love and Betrayal it's a it's a story uh, historical adventure uh, about uh, a Polish American hero of the late 18th century and it's a historical uh, book full of suspense and as the title suggests, love, war and betrayal, but it's actually, I think, important today. Uh, we live in very uncertain times where we have to like readjust our position uh, globally. There is a lot of pressure. Uh, we know the, the giant of China and our confrontation with them. But ever since World War II, we've we've been trying as the United States to uh, uh, police the world in a in a way and avoid wars. Uh, and uh, as you remember, World War II ended when uh, we uh, conquered Germany and Japan, 
and we can like postpone our confrontation with Russia for later. And today, 78 years later, we still have Russia as a, as, as a, a country that challenges uh, us. Uh, and we have uh, this war in Ukraine that started uh, in its hot phase in 2014, and it lasts till today. And then uh, the last year has been, has been horrible. Mm, and we're sending not only the, uh, the supplies and, and uh, uh, equipment, but our our soldiers are getting closer and closer to uh, to the uh, borderland uh, between uh, the countries of uh, European Union and Russia, uh, and I think that it's time for us to look at it seriously because Russia has been a surprise many times to us, and it usually is, I think, because uh, the analysis has not been uh, careful and it excluded Poland uh, since the. Uh, the partition of Poland, Poland was regarded as a as a unimportant, unconsequential country, something like the Belarus of today, I would say. Uh, but every now and then, uh, Poland's role, uh, Poland shows us as, as an important partner. And we have to now look at Poland, not from the perspective of uh, other European strong uh, uh, countries, like let's say France or Germany or Russia, but kind of like talk with, uh, talk with the Poles directly. But the story of the relationship between Poland and the United States starts in uh, uh, the times where Poland was uh, uh, losing 800 years of, of pretty impressive uh, development. Uh, late 18th century, it was dying as, as the largest country in Europe. Uh, and at the same time, the United States fought its war for independence uh, against the British Empire. And uh, when you look at it, uh, Kazimierz Pulaski is this person that fought both uh, in Poland and he fought uh, in, uh, uh, in the United States. Uh, I have uh, a screen here to share if I know how to do it. Uh, but uh, basically, without the screen, uh, unfortunately. Kate, Kate uh, can perhaps assist you. Yeah, um, Bogdan, do you want me to share it on my yeah, end? Please, okay. pop it in. I would really appreciate it because I don't have that option here. I don't see it. Thank you. Uh, so, so the book uh, available on Amazon is the uh, uh, is the story of of Kaz, and I call him Kaz in in Polish. It's Kazimierz, uh, and he's called Kazimierz here. Is really, if you think about it, not that much that you can find about him, although he is ubiquitous in the United States. So I called him Kaz just to, you know, so that it's easier for us to relate to him, to, to Kazimierz Pułaski. Uh, and uh, in Buffalo, uh, where we are right now, uh, there is a statue of, uh, of Kaz uh, in the middle of, of town. And I actually met Dennis during the Pułaski parade. Uh, but during that parade, uh, people who were uh, watching all the events I knew very little about Kaz Pulaski. And actually one of the persons said, what a great Buffalo citizen, Kaz Pulaski. And I told him, why would you say that he's, uh, that he's from Buffalo? And he said, well, we have a parade that honors him. So certainly he's from Buffalo. So I think there is a lot for, uh, for us to learn about, about Kaz Pulaski. Uh, next slide. Uh, and for all this time, since the 18th century, the United States, States has not forgotten about Kaz Pulaski. And uh, uh, it took uh, President Obama to sign all the papers and make him the eighth honorary United States citizen. And if you think about the millions of people and the generations, it's quite an honor. And it shows how what a unique uh, person Kaz Pulaski has been. And uh, we have uh, 16 towns in the United States uh, that bear a name of uh, uh, Pulaski. 
sometimes pronounced Pulaski, uh, but uh, they're all over uh, the United States. We have monuments. There's over 18 monuments of Pulaski. There are bridges, there are monuments, there are parades. Uh, so I'm just trying to say a little bit more about him. Next slide, please. And uh, uh, this is the book uh, about Kaz. And the next slide. And I, I think that he is this first American general who fought the Russians. When he was fighting the Russians, he was not the American general, of course, he was fighting them in Poland. Uh, but still, I think that kind of like learning from him and knowing more about him will know the story of the world as it develops. Uh, because I think the United States, when it was created, it just broke that uh, stronghold of uh, Europe over the, uh, the world. And uh, the United States started growing and it is what it is today. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, I think that the reason, as I said, although it's a historical book, I want to talk uh, and I want you to kind of like think about Kaz and the world today. Uh, so we have Russia, we have the war, uh, we're making decisions what to do uh, with that problem. And very often here in the United States, we listen to the ex European experts who uh, hail from France or, or Germany. And I think that the last few years showed that uh, the German and the French interest does not really uh, follow our interests here. And I think that we should kind of like look at it a little, little bit more deeply. Uh, and I think that it's a great beginning for us to understand where we are today uh, by uh, paying more attention to the beginning and to Cas. Next slide. Uh, and uh, just trying to understand the threat. Uh, so we have, uh, economically, Russia is not really uh, anything to, to talk about. It's been called uh, just, uh, rather than a country, just a large gas station. And militarily, I think we really, uh, should not be worried uh, about them too much, but propaganda-wise and uh, and the world and the ideas that they are uh, creating, that's where the threat is. And it really endangers, uh, I think, the, the, the geopolitical balance. Next slide. So when you look at Poland and, and, the, uh, and Europe, you see here uh, in those white uh, lines, this is the, uh, the territory more or less of the old Poland. Uh, and now we have countries uh, like Ukraine or, or Belarus or Lithuania uh, in, that, in the territory. Uh, the thing is that we have to look at these countries as a place where it would make sense to have people who live there decide about their own lives rather than have some other uh, stronger partners dictate the terms for them. Uh, because when you think about the, the world after the partition of Poland, then you notice that very soon we had Napoleonic Wars, then we had World War I, then we had World War II, then we had the Cold War, and then now we have the Ukraine War, which has been going on uh, almost for 10 years. And the, the hot uh, phase is a year, and uh, it's still continuing, and uh, nobody knows uh, where it's going to get us. Next slide. Uh, so when you look at that uh, at the territory, you see that it stretches from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea, uh, and that's where Pulaski uh, was fighting the Russians for five years on that theater of war, the Polish theater, and uh, the same war I think continues till today. And it is not so much because somebody made a wrong decision. Uh, there were good bad countries or politicians. I think it is because it's one of the most important parts uh, uh, in the world. And it's not me saying it's uh, people who are involved in geopolitics have been saying it for over 100 years. Next slide. Uh, so when you look at the world and China, uh, uh, you see here Europe and Asia, and you see all these red lines uh, start, starting from the heartland of uh, uh, of China. So the Chinese are trying to expand and we control them uh, through the oceans, but they're trying to uh, get their own uh, deals and decisions and connect to Europe. Uh, and when you look at it, Poland is on the way. 
uh, kind of like the doorway between uh, Europe uh, and uh, and Asia. So it's just a very it's a it's a very critical part, and that's how we should look at it. Uh, and uh, I've noticed that for many years. Uh, Poland was not treated as equal, or Ukraine as equal to Germany uh, or France. And remember, when the war started and when the Russia, Russians started bombing Ukrainian cities, people who decided to uh, solve the problem uh, were the French uh, and, and the Germans, and they wanted to do it, excluding the Ukrainians and the Poles, and it didn't work out. Next slide, please. So uh, when you look at the book, the book covers... Uh, uh, the late 18th century, um, and it starts with the election of the last king of Poland, King Stanislaw August Poniatowski. I call him King Stan in the book, so it's easier. So it's a confrontation uh, between uh, the last king of Poland and those who wanted to fight for, the, for Poland's independence. And Kaz and his family were the ones who actually uh, got involved in the fight. It started in 1768, and Kaz was fighting in Poland for five years. And when he left Poland, uh, the partitions started, uh, and uh, eventually Poland lost its independence. Uh, and then he uh, moved to the United States, and he continued the fight. So he showed up in the United States in 1777, and very quickly he got uh, involved in uh, major fights. Uh, so I, I described Brandywine, uh, where he actually, uh, the historians say, uh, was instrumental in saving uh, Washington's army uh, from total uh, annihilation. And as a result, he uh, was nominated uh, as uh, as a brigadier general, and then started working uh, with the with the American cavalry. He was the author of the uh, first American cavalry manual, and he introduced something in the United States that the Brits were uh, actually very concerned and almost afraid of, which is the uh, the Polish uh, uh, strategy of using the horse in the military, which was different than the British. And uh, the, the the book ends with uh, uh, the ultimate sacrifice. This is uh, as Kowalski's uh, fight uh, in Savannah, Georgia, where he was hit by a, a shrapnel and, 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 and died. Uh, in the meantime, I'm, I'm presenting all the com you know complications. Uh, how, what was the role of Russia at the time, and uh, and and the Great Britain? How those two uh, powers were helping, and how Poland was slowly, uh, you know, being eliminated from from the field. So I think that there is this uh, uh, continuation, especially as far as the military traditions of what Puaski brought in. And in a way, I see Puaski as an archetype, as the first uh, uh, role model for John Wayne movies and the American Cavalry. Uh, uh, that's what he brought in, and and it's till today, uh, his contributions are being studied very carefully. And that's why I think he was granted uh, that uh, great honor of being the eighth United States uh, honorary citizenship. Uh, so again, I hope that you're going to find the book of interest to you, and I hope it's going to help you understand the complexities of today's world. Uh, and it's up to us to pay attention to uh, who is important to us. And I think that if we uh, pay attention to it, then uh, we are going to be able to create maybe right now something that's going to make sense how to address the challenges of China and Russia today. Bogdan, thank you. Uh, that, that, that's, a, that's a good overview uh, about a history that, uh, yeah, we might have a parade, uh, but no, I don't think he was born here in Buffalo um, or lived here at any time. Thank but, you, Don. <laughs> uh, uh, but still, this, this, uh, this connection with history, American history, is important. Uh, if you've been in Savannah, you, you know there are uh, statues, monuments uh, uh, named after him, uh, 
And as you mentioned, how many towns did you say have some reference to him? It was a substantial number. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I counted uh, 16 towns. Uh, and there are counties and there are school districts called Pulaski or Pulaski uh, across the United States from Illinois to, uh, to Tennessee. And, uh, and uh, the thing is that many of those people know very little about uh, uh, the, na the, the name bearer. And there is a lot of organizations who, that use uh, Pulaski for branding, but as far as their uh, knowledge of him is very limited. Well, we do our best then with a with a day to uh, remember him, tell the story. Uh, uh, we have various ethnic festivals, and uh, certainly the uh, the Polish ones uh, are right up there with uh, with the best of them. I, uh, from my standpoint, certainly uh, a little biased. Uh, uh, folks, uh, this is your chance to ask some questions. I I see by our audience we've got some good historians in in the crowd, and I hope we get some good. Uh, questions here for Bogdan uh, uh, to deal with. You had mentioned just before we started uh, that you're planning a trip to Poland uh, and one of your hopes is to be visiting military bases and, uh, and, and helping the folks that are serving our country there better understand the rich Polish history that they are present in by serving in Poland. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit further on that? Uh, yes, I mean, I, the book has been around for for a few months, and it's available on Amazon. Uh, but there, there has been a few soldiers who read it, and they find it very interesting, especially those on the eastern flank of uh, of NATO, which is from uh, Estonia all the way down to Romania, but the bulk of the forces is. In, uh, in Poland, it's, we have 5th uh, U.S. Uh, Corps Army out there. They moved from Rammstein, Germany, uh, you know, their headquarters. Uh, so I talked with some of the, of the military, and they're very impressed uh, with the book, and they say that it really helps them motivate the soldiers. But from the soldiers, I had comments that it makes them understand what they do uh, in Poland, and in a way, they feel that they pay the debt of, uh, of honor to, uh, to Kaz Pulaski and for what he has done. Uh, and it's a time for our boys right now to be there. And it's it's pretty risky. It's, it's pretty close to the cannons. And there's already been a few straight rockets flying over uh, into Poland. So I hope that uh, Pulaski was the first and hopefully the last American general that had to fight the Russians. Let's hope so. Uh, uh, Kate, how are we doing for uh, questions or comments? Yes. Yeah, so. Um... Thank you, Bogdan, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, Kaz is interesting uh, character there. Um, however, someone asked, can you provide some more background about yourself, uh, how you got interested in all of this? Uh, I graduated, uh, my master's was in the Jagiellonian University in Poland, and I wrote about Native Americans out there. Uh, so I came here with a little bit of background knowledge on uh, what makes the, the the fiber of the United States, and also I was uh, I worked as a teacher and, a, and an administrator in Buffalo Public Schools for over thirty years, and I've noticed that there's not much uh, uh, about Poland and especially Pulaski uh, available for our students. And rather than complain, uh, I just decided to uh, sit down and write a book about him and and kind of like bring all these things together and show uh, uh, Poland, Polish culture, and Polish Americans the way I see them. Uh, it's in a positive way. And uh, some of the negative attacks for me uh, are just uh, totally uh, out of place. And I like what you uh, have here uh, in the library talking about prejudices. And I think that we need to build the bridges. So I'm trying to, to, to build this bridge and, and see how this, uh, this world of ours is getting smaller and smaller. And we all have to uh, sit down and talk and war is not the way to solve problems. So although I'm talking about the, uh, uh, the wars, uh, these are the wars to end all the wars. And we've tried it so many times. Uh, hopefully this time we're gonna have it right. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, recently I've been elected uh, on the board of Polish American Congress 
here Western Europe division. I'm, I'm, I'm very proud and I'm trying to bring the two countries together. And I think it's critical we understand one another. And I hope that Poland's going to play a role of, I don't know, like South Korea played, uh, which is, you know, be this strong uh, American uh, uh, presence and support in Europe in the face of this looming uh, danger of the confrontation we might have with China. Kate, any other questions? Not so far. Oh, um, someone asked about Buffalo's Polish sister city. Um, yeah, so so uh, it, it's it's a it's a it's a good question. Thank you. Uh, Rzeszów is a Buffalo uh, a Polish sister city, and Rzeszów is this place on the eastern. Uh, the, close to the eastern borders of Poland. And there is right now, it actually housed over 50% of its population were Ukrainian refugees. And, uh, and there is right now a ton of equipment and the military and the businesses and all the, uh, the bulk of the support uh, that we're uh, providing, we the United States are providing to Ukraine goes through Zeshov. So it's like a hub right now. And imagine in Buffalo, that you would have uh, 200,000 people show up uh, in two weeks. Hard to imagine, how, hard to imagine. Yeah, how it would look like. So kind of like, if you, if you look at the percentages uh, and uh, you don't hear about crises as far as the refugees in Poland. And uh, I, was, uh, I was there two years ago and I'm just, you know, going in June and I was impressed with the way the Poles are treating the Ukrainians and the way the Ukrainians behave in Poland. I mean, hardworking, intelligent, smart, organized. And uh, there is this bond that is built right now between Poland and Ukraine that has not been there for, uh, for hundreds of years. And I think we're not gonna make a mistake we made in the 17th century, and we're not gonna ignore uh, the fact that we need one another and we need to support one another uh, against the big uh, threat of Russia. Uh, and I, I, I speak Russian, I know, I know Russia, I've been there, and, and I think it's a police state. It's kind of like a North Korea on steroids. And it's very difficult for us here in the United States to understand it, because I think that we were uh, presented with Russia, kind of like we're trying to make sense out of all uh, that is out there. And remember, World War II, uh, they decided, they started the war with the Germans, they took half of Poland, uh, they and they keep it till today. Then they morphed it uh, into the the republics. Now they are the countries. I don't think it makes any sense to to rebuild an old Poland. Uh, I think that everyone should have the right to decide about themselves. So I believe in uh, uh, in the independence uh, and and the uh, and the borders of Ukraine, Belarus, or or Lithuania. But I also believe that these countries should work together and should not have anyone dictate terms uh, to them how they should do it. Uh, so I think that uh, in the uh, in Washington right now, people are thinking which way to go, and I hope that they're gonna choose that path of uh, uh, empowering Poland and uh, Ukraine, and then eventually Belarus to really decide about themselves. Because remember, we talk Belarus, but it's actually a, territory annexed by the Russians, and they have this puppet uh, uh, leader, Lukashenko, and uh, people treat him as he decides about anything. Well, he doesn't. Uh, it's just the, the Russians kind of like doze off how much of uh, uh, the independence they're gonna take away uh, from the Belarusians. So I'm hoping that as the outcome, we're gonna have free Belarus for them to decide what they want and uh, free Ukraine and that those three countries uh, are gonna be able to create uh, an economy and uh, and the balance and, and kind of like reduce uh, Russia to what it really is. Uh, and, uh, and I hope that this is the time and that I hope that we're gonna make the right decisions <clears throat> here in the United States <clears throat> and it's gonna help us here in the United States <clears throat> to have, uh, to be able to focus on on, on the big elephant, uh, which is China, uh, and people people don't. Uh, I think that in a way we talk about it uh, briefly, 
but the whole world that was created after World War II is shaking right now. And we have to uh, make some wise decisions to make sure that uh, we continue the development that we started it after World War II. Okay, but I can, uh, I'll, I'll, let me, Kate, do you have any more? Because I've got one. I want to yeah, um, this, is, this will be a quick one. Um, I already know we do, but does the library have your book? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the library does, does have the book, and I, uh, you're more than welcome to uh, uh, check it out. And, and that, and that's the case. I'm, I'm, I'll ask you an overview question. Uh, you, you do travel the world, and my sense from what I hear is that for some reason we don't emphasize history in our educational system here as much as others do. Uh, is that your sense? And and why might that be if it's true? Uh, well, you know, I, 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 I've uh, participated. I, I was a part of, of the American <clears throat> educational system, and I had answers uh, when I started right away. But the longer I worked, the more difficult the answers were. It's complicated. But you're right. Uh, nations think in different time zones. <clears throat> so the United States is 200 years, but we actually like to focus on the present. Poland uh, works in the zone of a thousand years. Uh, China works in the zone of five, seven thousand years. So you have to have that mindset. And I think that if you don't do it in school, it's not gonna happen. Uh, and I believe that uh, <clears throat> because of the role United States uh, plays in, in the world, uh, it would make sense uh, to, to know more about the world and the history. Uh, so this book is kind of like one of the ways, and I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of uh, uh, elements in this book that uh, people find it fascinating, and the response I get a lot is, uh, thank you, and I apologize. And I would ask, why do you apologize? Well, I didn't know. And I say, well, it's not your fault that you didn't know, uh, but you, you reach for the book, you read it, so uh, we should not feel bad that we don't know history. I mean, we can always check it out and, uh, and try to move on. Well, uh, one of the uh, words in our title, the Center for the Study of Art, Architecture, History, and Nature, uh, is the essence of imagining where we're going is to have some sense of where we've been uh, as a country, uh, as a community. Uh, and you've helped uh, give us some connection with an important figure, uh, going back to the Revolutionary War. Uh, and and maybe a better explanation of why we have one of the largest statues probably in the country <laughs> to, uh, to Kaz, your, um, your friend, Mr. Kaz, we'll call him. So uh, Bogdan, thank you very much for, uh, for a great presentation and uh, good luck with the book. And folks, uh, I encourage you to uh, uh, join the various festivals, uh, certainly including uh, the Pulaski Day Parade and, uh, and festivals along those those lines. All right. Okay. Yes, thanks. We'll see you. And in the meantime, uh, here's what we've got next week. Uh, it's a special program. Uh, we will be giving our uh, Imagine Greater Buffalo uh, appreciation uh, acknowledgement uh, to, as we did last year, we acknowledged the uh, Erie County uh, 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 200 organizing committee uh, that uh, that celebrated for the year uh, the 200th anniversary. This year we're giving it to the leadership team at the newly named Buffalo AKG Art Museum. And uh, our speaker, Dr. Joe Martin Lynn Hill, uh, is the deputy director emeritus uh, at the Buffalo AKG Art Museum. He'll be the speaker, and his uh, presentation is, is titled Essential Transformations, Building the New Buffalo AKG. It's an exciting moment in our community's history uh, to have watched the building for the last several years and to see a mid-June opening uh, and, uh, and all the ceremonies that will go with it. So, uh, I'm pleased that uh, the library through this Imagine program will be part of that uh, process of pointing to this great moment in our own town's history. Uh, I might mention the AKG Award 
uh, uh, has been given to such uh, notoriety as Charles Rand Penny, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Robert Shibley, uh, uh, Stan Lipsy, uh, John Conlon, uh, Jerry Rising, uh, Joan Bozer, Congressman Brian Higgins, uh, Sally Cunningham, uh, Bob Cressy, uh, and and many and a, and a few others, uh, roughly one a year. Uh, so it'll be uh, a good program, our 499th program next week. So join us if you can. I'm Dennis Galecki. Be well and good day. <laughs>